Hi, I'm George Crump, lead analyst with Storage Switzerland. As enterprises begin to invest in big data analytics, one of the terms they're going to hear a lot of is data lakes. What is a data lake? What are the attributes of a data lake? These are important questions, and we're going to talk about it on today's whiteboard. Joining me is Fred O. He's the product marketing manager at HDS. Fred, thanks for joining us today. Thank you for having me, George. So let's talk about some of these attributes of a data lake. What, are some, what is it, first of all, and what should people be looking for here? Well, the, the easiest way to think of a data lake is to think of this large container that has much like a real lake with rivers or tributaries coming into the river. Mm -hmm. You never know where the rivers are coming from or what type of, you know, what's flowing through, right? Okay. So much like that, structured data, unstructured data, machine to machine, log files, real time, uh, post, post uh, data at rest. Regardless, you need this large container to be able to store the myriad different types of data and not only that, be able to blend it together so that it's it's actionable and then more importantly, you can run analytics in a consistent manner. Right, because analytics a lot of times is about taking data, two data sets that don't seem like they're necessarily associated and making them make sense, right? Absolutely. Today, analytics is not a new concept. It's not, they're not new tools per right. se. Analytics have been around a long time. The problem has always been, and it's tied to traditional architectures, and that is, if you want to run or analytics on an Oracle data set, mm -hmm. you have to get the specific tools right. for Oracle. If you want to run it on SAP, DB2, uh, SQL Server, you get the idea. Right. The interesting thing about these traditional architectures is that customers have been telling us they're a little unhappy with paying so-called taxes on these types of enterprise class software, but not only that, the maintenance and the subscriptions, et, et, et cetera. Well, and, and the other thing that I've seen is a lot of times that you'll want to run data. For example, I was just talking to a customer a few weeks ago that was running data based on weather patterns and order history. So the order history obviously was in an Oracle database and the weather pattern was coming from a totally different source. Right. And the ability to map those two things together is something that analytics is specifically designed for, right? Absolutely. And not only that, it's the correlation of many different data types. We understand structured data right. and we sort of understand unstructured data as well. However, what's very interesting is let's. And I've got an example of a, a customer who's who's in the who's in the retail space, but before and this is something out of the movies. But mm -hmm. before a customer even walks into the store or the showroom, they're able to pull up social media information on that potential customer and really understand what that customer's background is like. I know it's a little scary, but yeah. but you get the idea. Right. And being, therefore, the idea is that retailer would be able to sell to that customer or have a more successful sales rate. Yeah, I think the example I've heard is like they would, you would obviously opt into this type of a thing, but they would then have access to your calendar, realize you have a football party this weekend, and you know Bob's coming over, and Bob happens to like you know uh, uh, microbrews, and so they might spit out a coupon for you on the latest microbrew or something like that, oh, right? Exactly. Well, yeah. and then of course we want to get to the point where it's not after you've you've left the store and 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 here's here's an email, right? right? But right there when you're when you're as you're actively shopping, right? So let's talk about some of the things we need to look for. In a st obviously, this data lake uh, ends up being a storage infrastructure, right? So it's a right. storage system. What are some of the attributes we need in that data lake? Well, so the, the key thing here is, again, as you're moving from a, the, the traditional way to the modern, the ability to be able to blend the different data types mm -hmm. Present it in a, in a format, I mean, there is some structure to this, but that new or modern analytics tools don't have to care what the application right. originally was. So, so these tools could be like uh, Cassandra and all the NoSQL guys, Hadoop, of course, things like that? Correct, as well as Pentaho with their analytics tools. Right. What most customers fail to understand in terms of an implementation of something like a data lake are two things. 
One is the ability to integrate all the different data types, because this isn't magic. It's, right. it's, this is a drawing, right? right, right. But the reality is there's, there's technology that goes here, technology that goes here, et cetera, and so on and so right. forth. Well, and there's protocols, right? You've got structured data and things they are going to want to communicate typically in, in a more uh, traditional environment, but we want to exactly. access it in a more modern thing like object or something like that, right? That's right. That's yeah. exactly right. And then the second part of that is as data is growing, to run the analytics, you don't want to be you don't want to be in a situation where you're moving large chunks of data right. around. Right. You want to be able to, or from our perspective, move the applications to where the data is physically right. located. Yeah, because that's the the big thing is put the compute where the data is. Correct. Right? Yeah, and then I, I would assume at some point scale has to be really important here too. Right? If I'm pulling all this data, because one thing we've learned about machine is they generate data really effectively, right? So how do we how do we uh, scale this environment it becomes a big issue as well. Correct. Well, there's that other big word, elastic, right? right. Elasticity. So the ability for the storage container to be able to scale. Uh, to hundreds if not thousands of nodes to be able to have a networking backbone that supports that to scale with predictable latency and predictable performance. All of that goes together to be able to support that type of a, 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 an infrastructure, if you will. Okay. Well, Fred, thanks very much for joining us and helping us understand what a data lake is. You're welcome, George. Thanks for having me. So one of the things you'll take away from this is understanding exactly what a data lake is. And I think the key term here is this blended uh, nature of it, the ability to intermix uh, older, more legacy type of data with the newer, modern data generated by machines and the classic Internet of Things now. So establishing this data lake becomes critical, and it's something you've got to really think about because this is a long-term strategy. You want to be able to hold this data for, in some cases, for a very long time. Thanks for joining us. I'm George Crump, Lead Analyst with Storage Switzerland.